We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. And uh, today we have uh, Linda Ampa in the house. And I haven't mentioned it, but Linda's my cousin. But, you know, I was totally clueless, you know. Mm -hmm. We just had you for a few vacations. You come to tech yeah. where we were, you know, and mm -hmm. things like that. And by the way, I might add now that in your book, you talk about a brother who you de described as a bully. <laughs> 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 and for folks, for, for, for the brother who is, you described as a bully is our own <laughs> one, two, three, four. <laughs> anyway, so you went through all of that, but you, eventually you seem to have put the pieces together um it wasn't like overnight you know but how how, how after this trauma you went back to school and how did you gradually start adjusting to life becoming a normal person well it um is. maybe a year or two after this incident um in our neighborhood we had a, we had a small fellowship that had sprung up and um, one of my very close friends, his brother, um, led me to Christ during that period. And that really helped me. Mm. It was a very nice fellowship, young people. I mean, I, didn't, I never shared my story with them. Mm. But I felt loved. I felt very, very comfortable in that setting, you know. So that really helped me, mm. you know. So I, I always say that it is having Christ in my life at that time. That's probably what sustained me because mm, mm. I don't think I would have, I would have made it. Mm, mm, mm. It was it was good. So of course along the way I fell left, right, and center. But every time I always knew that um, there was a seed that had been planted in me, and somehow there will always be that reminder that you know I'm here. I'm mm, still here. Mm, you know I can mm. help you back on your feet. Okay. And that helped me a lot. I see. I see. And also, well, you are. One of Ghana's most noted or notable designers, uh, your your brand is Cuddling Fashions, and you did you did something that Michelle Obama wore was it something like that? Yeah, I did. I did. I did. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we do have a fashion. I do have a fashion line, Cuddling Fashions, and we also have a production unit now that's card manufacturing. So um, we also produce for fashion designers who want a place to produce a garment. So you can mm. design their clothes and mm. bring it to us to produce for you. Okay. You know, okay. So we produce for different brands mm. around the world. Around yeah. the world? Yes. Really? Mm -hmm. That's why you're always traveling these days. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how, did, how did what you produce get to Obama? Michelle, well, sorry. Um, we produce it for a fashion brand in, um, in Canada. Okay. And these things were sold in shops in the US. Um, anthropology to be specific. So her stylist went out shopping for Michelle and then found this outfit. Hmm. And then they informed, they traced it back to the designers, the designers traced it back to the manufacturers, <laughs> you know. And so they let us be, they gave us information when she was going to wear it and all of that. And then they sent the pictures. How did it feel? It felt good. Yeah. It felt really good. It felt really good. Mm. It felt, uh, at first, I thought, you know what? We have been trying to get through to the international market for so long. Somehow you never make it. You know, you try and try and try and try. You know, but uh, another designer who is from that side mm. Mm. makes it and is selling, you know. Mm. So, but mm. you know, I thought, why not? At least we're a part of it. So we made it. So why not? We wow. enjoy it. Did I open like huge doors for you outside? It did, to be honest, it did. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So having that on your CV really helps. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. And uh, also interesting because I, I know your mom was a designer. Yes. Back in our day, we called them seamsters. Mm. Or oh, Pama, mm. they were seamsters. Mm. But in your days, a designer. So you see, and gl I, glamour. Yeah, there's more glamour. <laughs> and you used to watch your mother sew or yeah, work, I, they go to a factory. I How did, did you get up? get into yeah, the so design thing. Yeah, so our factory was in the house. Okay. And so, of course, there were, there were always machines in the house, there were always seamstresses and tailors there. <laughs> so every time I to school, I find myself in the factory. You know, I was, I was growing, but I wasn't tall enough. And those days, she was using industrial machines. And I always get my fingers sewn. I would be rushed, be rushed to call you in and out. <laughs> You know, they'll be warned, don't let her into the factory when she comes from school. Of course, 
Muscatella did the trick, you know, I give the security man Muscatella. And in. then in you go. Inside. <laughs> <laughs> so, I enjoyed it, and I still do. I enjoy so the, those were the, 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 the yeah. beginnings of you yeah. becoming a designer? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I enjoyed it wow. very much. I mm. still do. Mm. So the coloring is quite big. You have you are now at uh, Ring oh no no Osu. We are in Osu. We are in um, East Legon mm. in the North Industrial Area. Mm. 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 And then we are online. Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just I just I just want to see how you have evolved. You know, from that traumatic beginning and yeah. keeping your head high yeah. and evolving to where you are now. And you had a first marriage. Did that? How, how did that trauma affect you going into your first marriage? Um, I don't think it, I don't know whether it's, I don't think it has anything to do with my mm. childhood trauma, mm. but the challenges I was going through at that time, um, I was living with uh, family members. Of course, my mother passed early, so I was li living with family members, and then, of course, with challenges also there, and so, um, I found myself in this marriage. It was short-lived, but that's intense. That's a whole book <laughs> that <laughs> might come out. That's a piece of the portrait. That's a piece of that, the that portrait. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole piece. Uh, you know, and so that ended um, at some point. Um, we, it was more, um, those days we called it engagement. Mm. Uh -huh, but, I mean, it was marriage. Okay, uh -huh. okay. And then we broke it off. We realized How long was that? Um, maybe five, five, six years, something okay. like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So that was broken off. Yeah, it mm. was after mm. a lot of drama, <laughs> mm. <laughs> which will be coming out. In which will be coming out <laughs> soon. <laughs> <laughs> so you broke that off, yeah. and then um, and then started life again. Mm. And then along the way, I met Carl, whom I had met maybe 10 years earlier. Okay. And then we reconnected through a friend of mine and then we hit it off. Wow. Mm. So let, let me, meeting Carl mm. and at the point that you decided that this is my man and so this is my woman, w was there any point that you were forced or you, you felt obliged to reveal everything I, that you've been through i didn't feel obliged okay i really didn't okay i just felt that you know what um if you decided to share the rest of your life with somebody and he looked like a good person mm. you know why don't i share this piece of my life with him you know and if he wants to continue on the journey he will if not too bad mm. you know i would cry and move on after <laughs> all, crying was my pastime anyway <laughs> you know so i did you know, I shared, I shared quite uh, a bit with him, you know, and... And his initial was, reaction? Is that all? Oh, <laughs> yeah. really? Yeah, this, these were his exact words. Is that all? Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, so at that point you knew that this... Oh, this, I knew this, this, was, can this, handle. this was the right place to be, you know. But even that, of course, um, you know, when you go through such experiences, as much as you try to put it under the carpet and um, hide it and you think you've even forgotten it, it affects you in every area of your life. Mm. So at the back of your, my mind, I never trusted anybody and definitely not a man. Mm. I didn't, mm. you know. So even with this kind man and all his um, um, sweetness and everything, I, I still felt that, you know what, well, I mean, I've told him yeah, yeah. he wants to go along, but I still be careful because mm, mm. you never know. Be my dear. Yeah. You know, yeah. that kind yeah. of thing, you know. So I saw he was a very close person. Mm. Very, very close person. And how did that affect, like, when, 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 when you guys got together and got married and everything, mm. how was that, how did that impact, the immediate impact it had on the marriage? Was there any? Oh, yes, there yeah. was. We've, we've gone through a lot of challenges, you know, but um, I think we were both determined that we'll make it work, you know. So he comes from a family where parents are very close. So you'll be sitting in the living room and he'll come and sit next to you. I'm like, ah, this whole living room, kakake, can you not find another place to sit? Do you have to come and sit next to me? Why don't you take the other seat? <laughs> 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 like that, you know. Like, it was 
hard. Mm. It was very hard. Mm. It was very hard. Yeah. Well. Mm. It was difficult because there are times when you just want to be by yourself. You just do not want anybody in that space. You know, and it was it was very difficult. You know, trust was a big issue, huge. And, and what trust was issue here when you wanted your space? Yeah. Because there was nobody that you trusted enough yeah. to share that space with? Yeah, and then there mm. were times where you just could not be bothered by anybody. Mm. You just want to be by yourself. Mm. No particular reason, but you know what, let me just be. Don't come close, stay far away. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and how did he handle it? I mean, uh, well, he was just cool by it or he had to adjust to it? or what, what? Well, it turns out, he, he shared with me later that he was praying for me. Yeah, he said he was praying for me. Wow. So, yes, he I don't would. know whether to say that's spiritual or that's romantic. <laughs> 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 or spiritually romantic, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. you know yeah. So, yeah, he'll say that. So, yes, when, I, when I'm in those moods, mm. yes, he'll, he'll give mm. me my space, mm. you know. And later I found out that yeah, he was praying for me. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and on top of all that, too, there was another trauma that, well, I don't know what they'll call it trauma, but difficulty, because childbearing was a big issue. Mm. I know, what, was it for 10 years you were yes, trying? 10. Really? Yeah. For the first two years, I wasn't even thinking about it. I wasn't thinking about it. In fact, I wasn't until um, I, 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 I heard rumors and, you know, I'm like, like oh. rumors like, hey, oh, yeah, no, no, you know, <laughs> is this good to have? And I grew my, I raised my little sister. Okay. So a lot of people think that she's my daughter. Mm. So I remember one, one of the days he came home and he, he had, listen, 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 listen to this. She said, oh, one of his colleagues said, hey, so this wife of yours, because she has one, she she's not even trying to. <laughs> 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 so I asked him, what did you say? He said, mm, it's okay, the one is good for us, so we are fine. <laughs> he just played along, you know. Yeah. So I, I realized people had started talking, you know. And then so we started trying. Was it pressure that bothered both, the both of you or no. something that it didn't bother you? It did at some point, but yeah. he rather was the one who was always encouraging me that, you know what, I didn't marry you to have children. If God decides to bless us with children, praise the Lord. But mm. if not... Uh, I didn't. I've had, wow. I have nine siblings. There are, there are ten. Mm. So he said, you know, <laughs> I've helped raise children, you know, so I'm good. There are nine after me, so yeah. there's plenty. <laughs> so, so for ten years you were, ten you years guys were, we trying? were struggling, struggling um, through orthodox, through herbal, through spiritual means, <laughs> somersaulting backwards and there has to jumping. Be some no, no, just, just a single <laughs> Hey, you never know. Well, <laughs> I don't want anybody uh, somersaulting their house. Uh, <laughs> material case, I'm sure. No, so, uh, so I know. Mm. See, uh, but you went through a lot of... Oh, we went through a lot. We went through a lot. Spent a lot. And I remember the last attempt to my husband said, hey, you know what, if we're not careful, by the time this child comes, we'll have sold this house and we'll be living in Makola or somewhere <laughs> waiting for them. You know, because it's expensive. It's very, very, very expensive. Fertility treatment is very expensive in this country. And in fact, around the world. Yeah. You know, yeah. so there's help out there, but it's not cheap at mm, all. You mm. know, so um, I really feel for um, couples who are going through this kind of uh, challenge. It's difficult. Mm. Mm. And then the societal pressure. Sometimes yeah. I don't think they even realize they are putting pressure on you. You know, so I stated in my book at some point, I stopped going to 31st all night service in church because at the end of the service the first official well wow, a year by now uh, you'll be carrying your whole baby i go so tired of hearing <laughs> it so i decided so the whole of january i won't even go to church wow yes because i didn't so want you don't to, hear i didn't any... want to hear it i was tired you know and to make matters worse we were holding fellowships in our home and people will come to our home and receive their breakthroughs and all their prayer hey, and then the hosts. <laughs> the hosts did oh. break <laughs> So every time we had a circle time, we called it a circle time, you stand in the middle and then you raise your prayer topic. So every time we will stand, of course, they will even allow you to speak. Automatically, it's childbirth prayer. Wow. You know, so I got really tired. You know, so it was, it was pressure, subtle pressure, but it was there. Mm, mm. It was there. It was there. Any, at any point that you resigned that maybe this is not mine, I won't Actually, have a child? we did yeah. a number of... Um, um, IVF treatments 
And this one that, thank God, I got pregnant, was going to be our last attempt. Mm. We told ourselves, if this one doesn't work, that's it. We have finished. Mm. You know, we we'll just move on, you know. Mm. Mm. Although, um, people had suggested ad adoption and all of that. Uh -huh. I didn't know whether I have the heart for it. Why? Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. I think that, of course, now hearing some of the stories, my sister living with me and some others who lived with me, what they said they went through living with me, I realized I was really broken. <laughs> so, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. what? Um, I, I was probably living my mother and much more. You know, um, I, tell, I told her now I'm happy I probably never adopted because probably would have yeah. put a child through the same yeah. thing, you know, without wow. knowing, mm. you mm. see. Because I, I was a broken uh, person myself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. raising a child. You are a child raising a child, mm -hmm. and you are broken too. You are a broken child. You know what I mean? <laughs> Traumatized, broken, Traumatized broken, child, broken child, raising a child. Messed up child, yeah. raising a child, yeah. Yeah. you yeah. know. And it's not just that. There was a young boy who used to live with me also. He is, he's, he's almost a psychological mess. And when I, he's not very well for himself though, you know, mm. has a doctorate degree and all of that. Mm. But we had lost contact when I, when I met him after so many years. And the horrific story, he said he went through living with me. Really? Oh. And was there something that you were no. even aware of? No. Wow. No. Wow. No. No. Wow. You know, so um, I'm happy I never did because I probably would have, yeah. but I, I, um, I always say that um, God's time is always perfect, yeah. perfect. Yeah. You know, um, if I had a child earlier, I don't know what kind of mother I would mm, have been, mm, you know? Mm, uh -huh. So mm, the timing is just mm, right, you know? Mm. Um, she came at a time when I, I was much better psychologically, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, uh -huh. I knew much better. I mean, I was in a better place, yeah. you know? So God's timing is perfect. Wow. perfect. And she's an angel. Yeah. She's a beautiful, adorable, yeah. well, I can't call her a little girl anymore. She's not a little, <laughs> on your, on your little sir, but she's still a little girl. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how, how, how did it affect you having your own after 10 years? What was? It was, it, reality didn't hit me mm. until maybe months later. Mm. It was all like a dream and I was probably going to wake up and, and realize, it, was, oh, it was all <laughs> seven, 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 yeah. Yeah, right right <laughs> you know so um it, it, it makes a difference you know to know that this one that's somebody who stay with you yeah uh -huh, hopefully for a long time yeah, you know yeah. and uh, you are prepared to receive mm -hmm, her mm -hmm. you know physically mm -hmm, mentally mm -hmm, everything mm -hmm. you know so it's, it's a yeah. good feeling that's amazing. But um, be, before you leave us, we, we have to get words of... Oh, by the way, this is the copy of the book, um, Pieces of the Portrait. And um, I'm giving away this book to you young ones out there, man. Uh, from what age? Anybody can get this book, huh? What age mm -hmm. do you recommend? I think 12 and up. 12 and up. 12 and up. And you always are computer wizards and you know everything. Um, the WhatsApp line is on the screen right now is zero two triple six nine nine two four nine that's a whatsapp line and um send a whatsapp message to this number and uh, somebody will get in touch with you and trust me you get a free copy of this book 12 and up you need to read this book and um now that i've told them what what word do you have where your final words for girls who see you aunt linda i want to be like you and you know, just, just. Yeah. I will tell my young viewers, um, work hard, work hard. Um, get every education that is possible um, so that you can be prepared for whatever you find yourself or you intend to do in the future. And for another group, I'll tell you that if you have been through any traumatic, traumatic experience, mm. you can't brush it off. You can brush it off and and uh, run with your life it is possible it's possible um now like i said there's help out there so you can seek help um we're trying to set up a hotline um since we launched this book 
um, a lot of people. Mm. In fact, mm. it's taking a different turn mm. than I, I actually mm. envisaged. Mm. A lot more mature women, women in high standings. Just wow. We're They've all been through this. Powerful women in society, all kinds of women who have gone through such experiences. I'm telling you, I, I, I've... I've just been amazed at the things I'm mm. hearing. Mm. And so, sometimes they come and we talk and we all end up crying because I don't know what to say. Mm. I thought my story was horrific, horrific. Mm. Yes, you know, so you can, we will, we will let you know which numbers to call. We, we might not be the final <laughs> authority on anything, but at least we can hear you out, you know, and then pray with you along the way. And, help you on your walk. Mm. And by the way, Linda, hold on just a second. This is a good time to give your hotline out. And folks, the number, all of you who are listening, the number to get in touch, their hotline is 055-356-9921. And the number is on your screen right now. Call this number. You've heard the story. If you need any kind of help or somebody to listen to, the number is right there on your screen. Where else can they buy them in case? Um, um, it's going to be online. OK. Um, and then it's going to be on Amazon. Okay. And it's going to be on um, in all the um, filling stations. Yeah. Nice. So nice. I think in a couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah. We ran out of the first set to be published. Um, okay. Um, printed. So the right. new set will come sometime in August, and then we'll have them all over. So they Fantastic. Should be one, yeah. So while we're waiting for the new set, at least you can get in touch with us at Safa and get your free f-r-e-e -E, copy of the book linda yeah. thank you so much ganas my beautiful thank for joining you. us and sharing this experience with us thank you and um uh, i know that uh, this book is going to go far many people are going to get this book and read it and it's going to change a lot of perceptions and um we are lucky to have had you here to tell us about it thank you thank sure, you show us love one more time <laughs> And see you next time, we'll be right back. The KSM Show.